Hey everybody, it's Zoltan Gero here and in this short video I will show you how you can quadruple your leads. I know it's kind of a big promise so I try to live up to it and I know a few of these ideas will be kind of surprising for you but uh, please follow it with me and I will show you how you can do it exactly step by step and by the end of it I will show you uh, a PDF where you can download a uh, few resources to do it effectively and let me start it. So first I'm sure you've ever seen or you've seen this opt-in forms many times. It's a landing page or it's a squeeze page where you send traffic, for example, PPC, pay-per-click advertisement or SEO, where people can opt in to your email list. And the main idea here is to how to follow up with those who doesn't do what you ask them to do. So this is what the main idea behind behavior-driven marketing. So here I write a contingency form if they opt in or not. In few cases they opt in, but in most cases they don't. Especially if you if you have a blog, then your opt-in rate will be very low. If uh, you use also landing pages, then your opt-in rate will be much higher, but still having, for example, 20 or 30 percentage of opt-in rate is kind of high, uh, but easy to achieve. But in, in these cases as well, three out of four people will not opt into your email list. And what are you doing with those people? Most businesses are let them go. And if you just simply follow up with them with the retargeting ads, it, may, it means that most of those who already see the opt-in page or landing page will be retargeted with ads, which will have a much higher click-through rate and much higher opt-in rate because this is not the first time when they see a landing page from you. I recommend not to use the exact same opt-in page because there was a reason why these people didn't opt-in for that very particular landing page. But if you send them for a different opt-in page, there is a high chance that they will opt-in and you can continue this line as you would do normally. The second step, if, if they didn't opt-in after retargeting, then what you do and this will this part will be especially useful if you're in b2b sales because in this case i recommend to get a contact info for those particular company for some decision maker so this is the first step and the second step is to ask their permission to follow up or ask their permission to reach out to them and speak to them about your offers or about your your business and that's absolutely normal i know some people are saying that this is spam but if you ask for their permission first then it's not spam. Of course, I'm not a lawyer, so please check the spam cam low. But this is what happens. So someone sees an opt-in page, he or she doesn't opt-in. After that, you send them to retargeting list and show some retargeting ads. They still don't opt-in. What you do is you check their company and find contact details for your company. And I will show you how to do it automatically, very fast. And absolutely automatically again, you send them a few emails or an email sequence asking their permission to follow up. This is not spam. Because if they say, no, I don't want to hear from you, absolutely just stop. That's super fine. But from those who have seen your landing pages, a few companies will be very well qualified. In this case, what you can do is, uh, for example, you can use your Google Analytics and you will see some resources uh, in after this video in PDF, how to get these contacts easy and automatically. For example, I use a service called Leadberry and I truly love it because it pulls data out from your Google Analytics and you don't need to do anything and it automatically, automatically delivers B2B leads for you. So not just companies, but also contacts within that company and you can decide who you want to approach and who not. And I use another service, for example, Woodpecker, uh, who, where you can schedule a few cold emails and you can send one, two, three emails asking to follow up or speak with someone who's a decision maker in that company. And in case he replies for the first email or the second email, the sequence stops. So it's not a spam campaign, it's more like a permission campaign. And it, I, I don't mean most of the people will not reply or they will reply, please unsubscribe or please stop emailing me. And that's super fine. But the most important thing is to not let these lead score, not stop losing this, these leads. And this is why I recommend using Leadberry, especially with some kind of other services like Woodpecker. And in this case, you can automatically follow up with those who decide not to opt in and who will not opt in to your retargeting ads. And, or even if you don't want to use retargeting ads, you can simply 
find their contact info and send them a few emails and on autopilot. I think that's, this is the best part because you can get, you know, most of the highest quality leads will not opt into your email list. Why? Because they are from big businesses, they are extremely busy, so they will not have time to opt in for an email list and receive a huge or lots of emails from you, but they are willing to reply for a specific email which asks uh, for uh, to follow up with them. And that is absolutely normal in B2B sales. So they will be not surprised. However, they will not opt in to your email list. So this is what I want to show you in this video. You will find a few resources below this video. Download it and install it very quickly. It's super easy to do and um, it will especially uh, triple or quadruple your leads, if, especially if you're in B2B sales. Okay, so if you sell for businesses, then go for this path and you have much more well-qualified or highly qualified leads in your pipeline.